Transparent aluminum is a fictional material introduced to Star Trek canon in the fourth major film, when a time-traveling Enterprise crew needs to capture humpback whales in 1986 so that the whales can communicate with an ultra-powerful alien probe that's threatening to destroy the world. It makes more sense in context. Maybe. But just how possible is transparent aluminum? In this video, we'll use real material science principles and see just how close we can get to Star Trek in the real world. To understand if transparent aluminum is possible, we need to understand why things are transparent in general, and it's not always super straightforward. Light is carried by photons, and for something to be considered transparent, there basically needs to be no major obstacles for these guys. We want our photon to make it all the way through this material relatively unscathed, but the reason why most materials aren't transparent is that there are a lot of things that can bring this guy's journey to an abrupt halt. Moving back to Star Trek, the plausibility of this material really depends on what we mean by transparent aluminum. If we take the words literally, it's a pretty big stretch. Aluminum itself is a metallic element, and aluminum alloys that are often colloquially referred to as aluminum are obviously metals as well. You might have noticed that of the nearly hundred metallic elements and countless metallic alloys, none of them are transparent. That's not a coincidence, because a metal is a material where electrons are highly delocalized. They're not just bound to one atom or shared between two, they're sort of free to move wherever they like. These delocalized electrons give rise to most of the common properties you associate with metals. It makes them good electrical conductors, since these free electrons can obviously conduct electricity, it also makes them shiny for reasons that are a bit more complicated. But basically what it boils down to is that these free electrons are free to interact with any incoming electromagnetic radiation, making them highly reflective to both visible and infrared light. Basically, our photon is likely to interact with one of these roaming electrons almost immediately once he enters the material, and his journey will end pretty quickly. Pure aluminum that's only 50 nanometers thick blocks 99.9% .9 of incoming light. That's less than a thousandth the thickness of human hair. So, metallic aluminum is not a great place to start when it comes to making a transparent material, and that's true of pretty much any metal. Free electrons are what gives metals their metallic properties, and it's also what makes them non-transparent. But if we give Star Trek a bit more leeway in terminology, things get a little more interesting. Metallic aluminum can never be transparent, but what about alumina? Aluminum is a metal, but alumina means aluminum oxide, and maybe in the Star Trek universe folks got a little lazy with this distinction. Even though this molecule shown on screen isn't realistic, it does look like there are other elements in here. So, maybe this was always intended to be some sort of aluminum-based compound, rather than a metallic alloy. Anyway, since the aluminum atoms in alumina share their outermost electrons with the oxygen atoms to form this bond, we no longer have free electrons running around in the material. At an atomic level, light doesn't interact much with alumina. The bonding is so strong that the energy required to make these electrons jump to the next available energy level is deep into the UV range, so our photon can sneak through without disturbing them. Even though alumina specifically refers to aluminum oxide, other elements like nitrogen or fluorine that strongly bond to aluminum can produce a similar effect. By letting the electrons and aluminum strongly bond with elements like this, we're at least one step closer to transparency. But the lack of electron interactions alone doesn't make transparent aluminum possible. Actually, a lot of materials should be transparent by this criteria, but not many are. 
This is just the first level that needs to be cleared. Even if the electrons in the pure material don't interact much with incoming light, our photon's journey can be blocked in other ways. For example, if there are impurities in the material, it can create electrons that aren't as tightly bound and free to interact with visible light. One of the most well-known examples is diamond, where the normally transparent and colorless material can turn all sorts of colors depending on which impurity is present. Other times there are simply atoms missing, called vacancies. If this vacancy occurs in a site that should be occupied by an electron-grabbing element like oxygen or nitrogen, it's called an F-center. Just like the case with metals, our photon can't pass when there are these free electrons roaming around. Bad news for transparency. Even if things are relatively clean at the atomic scale and our photon survives the initial plunge, there are still some big obstacles he might run into. Larger empty spaces in the material, called pores, can also scatter light. This seems like a bigger version of the vacancies we talked about earlier, but actually the effect is completely different. The issue here isn't necessarily the free electrons, but rather refraction and or scattering of light at the boundary. Think about what happens when you try to look through really bubbly water. Both water and air are transparent, but the combination isn't, and the reason is scattering and refraction at these many interfaces. Running into one pore might not mean instant death for our photon, but too many will quickly make his journey impossible. A similar problem occurs with crystal structures in the material. Atoms tend to stack in regular units like this, and in most crystalline materials there are many different crystal orientations. Region of different crystal orientations are called grains, and they can also pose problems for transparency. If the grain size is near the wavelength of visible light, the scattering will be particularly strong. One option to alleviate this problem is to make these grains very small, smaller than the wavelength of visible light, but there are many different scattering mechanisms that occur depending on which material we're talking about and in some cases it might be beneficial to make grains larger than the wavelength of visible light instead. Regardless, for our photon to make it through, we need to control the size of these grains. So for Star Trek's transparent aluminum to be somewhat plausible, their aluminum-based material is going to have to make it through all these levels. It needs to be something with strong bonding like an oxide or nitride, it needs to be relatively free of impurities or vacancies at the atomic level, porosity must be minimal, and grain size must be carefully controlled. It's a tremendous challenge, but it's one that cutting-edge material science research might just be up for. Amazingly enough, compounds that contain aluminum are some of the best candidates for high-strength transparent materials. You probably know of at least one already. The gemstone sapphire is actually alumina. It's typically sold as a blue stone because of the impurity coloring processes we discussed earlier, but pure sapphire is actually a colorless stone. It's commercially available as white sapphire, and it's almost as hard as diamond. Tiny gemstones like these single crystals are obviously not suitable for window-sized applications, but we have a few other solutions. A couple well-studied examples are pure alumina and magnesium aluminate spinel, both of which can be fairly transparent and much stronger than typical glass. In these materials, the tough part is trying to minimize porosity and control grain size. Oxides like this usually have very high melting points, so the typical way to form them into the desired shape doesn't involve melting but rather shaping a fine powder of the oxide and baking it until it forms a solid chunk. This process of densifying the powder is called sintering, and the conditions need to be finely optimized for things like alumina or magnesium aluminate spinel to be transparent. One of the biggest issues is that it's hard to create a material that is fully densified from this loose collection of powder. There's usually a bit of remnant porosity.
There are many specific techniques aimed at reducing this and ongoing research to improve them, but it's already possible to create reasonably transparent materials from these two options. But the real champion of transparent aluminum candidates is probably aluminum oxynitride. Here too, decreasing porosity is important, but the interesting thing is that the approach for grain size is kind of the opposite of the previous two. Grains are deliberately made very large to reduce the total boundary area, but it's still typically made through powder processing techniques. The result is an incredibly clear and strong material. It's even been proposed as one of the leading candidates for next-generation transparent armor. One somewhat well-known test showed it outperforming traditional bulletproof glass laminate, despite being less than half the thickness. Scotty's claims of transparent aluminum being many times stronger than plexiglass might not be all that outlandish. One remaining issue is the price. It's much more expensive than most transparent materials. But in terms of pure performance, aluminum oxynitride is the real deal. Naturally, the internet has rushed to call this material transparent aluminum, and it's even marketed as such in some cases but I do have a few issues with this label. We don't call regular window glass transparent silicon, or sunscreen transparent titanium. Labeling an oxide or nitride like this, as if it's a metallic material, seems a bit of a stretch. The distinction between metals and metal oxides isn't just a pedantic one, because their properties are completely different. Aluminum oxynitride is a ceramic material. It's incredibly strong, but it's still going to shatter like glass rather than bending like aluminum. It's also going to be an electrical insulator since there aren't the free electrons of aluminum. But overall, that's a minor issue in the grand scheme of things. How close can we get to Star Trek's transparent aluminum in the real world? The answer is that we pretty much already have it if you give a bit of leeway in terminology. Metallic aluminum can never be transparent, and it might be a bit of a force fit to call compounds like aluminum oxynitride transparent aluminum, but they are transparent. And it's amazing that some of the best options for high strength transparent materials are aluminum compounds. Transparent aluminum isn't highly illogical after all. <laughs>